Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. We've got a lot of plans to bring this Cadillac back to its original beauty. We're gonna start with the interior today and I brought Jessica with me so we can limit the amount of duct tape that I use. Yeah, we're gonna get started by getting the front and back seats ripped out, tear up the carpet, hopefully without puking. And we'll check out the floor and if it's not too bad, we'll just clean her up and throw some Pour 15 down and new carpet. But if there's holes, we're gonna go ahead and patch them. You ready? I'm ready. We gotta get these seats unbolted, but... To start, I think we're gonna run the mouse sucker 500 through here and try to remove some of this death because every time you move in here, chunks of it just get lodged in your back neck. So we'll get this vacuumed out and then we gotta figure out where the bolts to the seats are. GM are usually just front and back. This seat did not work until I ran the pressure washer on her and now I got seatage. So that really helps because usually you got to bring her all the way forward to get the back bolts out. We should probably get you a mask, huh? Sure. If any of you watching have any info on this light thingy, shoot that down in the comments. I found this last time. I don't know if this is original equipment or you buy them extra from the dealer or what the deal is, but I thought that was pretty neat. We got to see what else we can dig out of that thing. That's most of our smell, I think. Those are good. Um, oh yeah, that cup holder's bolted down. I better get a pry bar out or something. Ooh, we got nice. Some look decent. Well, Jessica struck gold here. This is everything out of the glove box and we kind of laid it out. Well, probably looks like a mess to you, but this makes perfect sense to me. Look at this, we'll start over here. Actual protecto plate to the car with the warranty card and everything, that's huge. If we could find the build sheet, that's awesome. The owner's manual is in mint condition. Here's the new vehicle warranty card, maintenance card. Here's the pre-delivery service and checklist sheet. Fortunately, over here, it was kind of eaten up. It was originally to a leasing company, but under an individual owner. So they must use their business as the purchasing power. New Cadillac manual. And then this stuff here, I'm thinking this came out of their previous Cadillac because this is a report of accident from a 64 Cadillac. And then all of these are 1967 to 1970. And then these are newer. So the car has been to Iowa, Illinois, Phoenix, North Dakota, um, just from this pile. This is from 1970. This is dated 1969. Here's the free car wash. I'm gonna take this in, see if I can still get that. And here's where all of the original warranty paperwork came right from the dealer inside of that. 
Pam's can opener. That's really cool. I'm gonna try to clean that up. Rolly Flex camera manual. And this kind of tells me the story. This is the original owner, and they sold it in 1995 to this gentleman, who is the guy that I got it from. And then all of this is supporting documentation that it was parked in 99 or early 2000. This one I'm not gonna open because it's got name and address. I'm doing the same hiding it here. This, she had belts, uh, condenser, points, wires, trans filter, air, shock. air shocks, yep. Um, so when this guy got it, right before it was parked, uh, he did a lot of work actually to it. Um, this is empty, just a notebook. I'm not gonna open those. Fancy feller, some coat checks, things like that. So all of that somehow fit into that glove box. I haven't looked at it. Is I'm it surprised actually that none of this is like too far gone. Yeah, that such a tall the glove box looks. Hold yeah, on. they didn't. None of this is really eaten besides one, that. And then that one paper, but which means most of that probably came from the seat padding, unfortunately. Probably. <laughs> How did you say that? Yeah. So let's go take a look and here she's been vacuuming like crazy while I was organizing that. Already looks tremendously better, but this carpet is still yeah, nasty. Yeah, we've got to rip that it's, out. Terrible. Yeah, and it's been flooded and ugh, it's just really bad. So we'll keep plugging away. Um, I'm going to organize all that stuff up front, box it up, and then when she gets done vacuuming, we'll move on to the seat bolts and try to get the seats out of here. Looks like that's where the mice were getting in. So I'd imagine we've got some sort of hole down here in the floor. Seeing some rust there and uh, also back here. But guys thinking there's probably an ankle vent over in here-ish area. There are so many digitals under here. I got like cableage. And there's a yellow one and there's just, there's so much stuff. Never been into a Cadillac seat like this. I think if a guy can just lean her backwards, then we'll get a better eye on the wiring. I'm sure it all unplugs somewhere or another. Well, I just, I can't see nothing. I can't breathe in this mask. I don't know. I think something's happening down here. It took a couple tries, but the switch finally started working and brought the back to seat up, but wanted to show you this. Look how high the water is sat in this car. That's, uh, I don't know, nine meters, something like that. But why well, you can see the water line here too. So the back of this car literally had three to four inches of water sitting in it at one point. So the likelihood of the floor is just being, you know, deleted, it, it just went up quite a bit. And I got to figure out now where these bolts are back in this area is that mold looks like it watch this padding see that water so far this is unbelievable i think the drain plug right here actually was leaking and letting water out this is just disgusting but no big hole which is insane. Okay, so there's two up here. And for whatever reason, they put one way down in here, which is nearly impossible to get to. And then there's one on the other side, which from the back of the seat, you gotta jam your arm all the way in there, which my hands don't even fit in my pockets. So that's fun. And 14 days later, I think I almost have one side of the seat unbolted. You gotta just dig in the carpet. Found a corner. This one's the worst. It's way up under there. Oh, it's actually coming easy though. Yeah, that's the great news is, oh, I guess there's eight bolts. Oh, it's so, like, the carpet is so wet. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's like getting my gloves wet. 
So that's the last one. And I got a, I got the seat proper later set up over here. You need these. You get them at your parts store. And uh, these hold the seat up, so when that bolt pops out, it doesn't come crashing down. I think we're gonna lift the belts out with the seat instead of trying to do the old slam, cram, maneuver stuff later. Just bring her all out one unit. No idea how we're gonna do this. We're gonna try to flip her around or just slam it through. I just I don't know if we got enough horsepower to lift that thing upside down. I know, but that looks to be the only option. I wonder if they took it out of the back seat. If that was not in there, this seems to look like a wider. Like if we took the back seat out first, maybe. Yeah, the bottom. Yeah, and then, and then slid it back, back, and then. That could be it. We'll try to wrestle it out the side door first, I guess, and then go from there. We fought this for way too long. That's done. There you go. Now, there's a wire that the seat frame comes in here and hooks on these GMs. And that was not easy getting that out because they were rusted in and then we're limited on space. Put my getter out of there 9000 with Jessica pulling at the same time. Made it happen. Oh, that looks really nice. Fine. Try solving that. We got floss. Ready? Yep. Arm restage. We got arm restage. But the smell is getting worse somehow. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's so heavy on this side. I can like, lift it up. Yeah, lift it. Well, here's where we're at. The seam seal in here, I just hit it with my fingers and basically just blew apart. We'll have to get something else in there. Wire wheel it, clean her up. Got this sill over here yet to get out. We'll get all this carpet out. It is nasty. Most of the mice activity back here just keeps coming out of the seat. So all the cushion in the seat, that's what made their home. I got to snip that accelerator pedal out to get the front carpet out. And then we'll start vacuuming and see what we end up with here. It's really heavy from being so wet. Oh, interesting. It's tucked under this little edge of a goo. Hmm. Took my little Harbor Freight unit and had just enough metal flake left. Got the seams pretty good. And the seals got around the pillars and worked my way across there but ran out. Jessica's gonna vacuum it up again and then I'll hit it with the wire wheel. This is gonna be like ammunition if we don't get that out. It's just gonna be, you know, doing that. Hurts in the face a little bit. Well guys, I'm floored. See what I did there? I've been in here digging, looking for rust holes, and I just, I ain't got none. I don't see a single one in here. And I can't explain it. I've been in here just thinking, how is that even possible? And I just, I don't know. I mean, we saw how much water was sitting back in here. Pull that up all the way. Look at that. There's always rust under that. Nothing. So that's, Pretty crazy. yeah, that's great news though. Really speeds up this program. We're gonna keep grinding away. We got a cup wheel on some angle grinders, like that. Get all this cleaned up, and then we'll come back with some seam sealer, and then we'll eventually get to, you know, lining in some juice in here. But I think for tonight, we're gonna call it quits. It's about five o'clock. We're sweaty and tired and just full of grime. So we'll hit it, uh, Hit her again tomorrow. Well, day two. And I went ahead and just dumped in about another two and a half hours of just grinding and scraping and sanding and you name it. 
went through two cheek poker 9000s. But she came right back around and I'm gonna jam in some seam sealer tonight, let that dry overnight, and then tomorrow I can actually get in here and paint up the floors a little bit. A couple different ways to do your seams. You could just caulk them in and they come in like 11 billion colors, white, tan, clear, black, gray, silver, whatever. These were clearly brushed in. As most GMs, you got two big wide seals in the front and rear of the main pan and then the seals here. I just got this little brushable seam sealer here. Just lay her in there nice and thick. You could paint it about an hour after and some even 30 minutes, but I'm not. Here's what the floor is looking like now. And it's looking good. And this gray kind of black color is actually a rust treatment that I threw down in here. I did two coats and it's supposed to just convert her over to paintable metal and it looks a lot better. This is actually the worst part of the car. Got just a little bit of pitting, but I'm not too worried about it to be honest. That's the biggest seam there. And then there's a similar one up here over the hump. And then down the doors here in the rockers and sills. And that's it. The rest of this is just, it's fine. I still can't believe how good this floor is. A lot of this metal looks like she just rolled off the production line. It'll paint up pretty good actually. Well, it's day three or 27 now. I don't know. Jessica's back. She's going to wipe down the floor with some Ace of Base sauce here and then once that dries, we're going to hit it with the rust preventative pour 15. And you want to do this professionally. So we bought some foam brushes and we're just going to, you know, cake her on. I am going to take the sills off and just, that's it. We're going to let her rip. Got my wire limb holder up for 2000 back here. And I could only find the 1000 for up here. But that'll help kind of keep this out of the... Or 15 when we paint her down. Jessica's got the Ace of Base sauce and she's just wiping all this off. Gotta get all that grease and grime out of there for the mehicular adhesion that's gonna happen. That's how dirty it looks. But it cleans up pretty good. You can see down here. Once that dries, we'll come in here and just start brushing her in. Clean, rust treated, seam sealed, and painted. Looks pretty good. Let this dry overnight and then we'll start the cleaning and reassembly. All of the products we're using today are from the Sprayway Automotive line. We're going to start off with the glass cleaner to do most of the heavy duty lifting and clean up all the dirt and grime. Derek and I have found that the glass cleaner is actually a really great multi purpose cleaner. Uh, he uses it for a lot of things here at the shop, and I use it for a lot of things at home, and it works really well. Then we're going to move over to the leather cleaner and conditioner for the seats. It'll clean them up really nice, and then it'll help bring out the softness in the leather. Uh, eventually, we're going to get over to the interior detailer high gloss. That'll be for all the plastic parts in the car, uh, like the dash and the steering wheel and all of that. Um, and then at some point, we'll get to all these over here. Um, but if you're wondering, these all have a really great smell as well. Uh, this one smells like cherry, which I really love. Um, don't forget, you guys can head over to SprayWayAutomotive.com to pick up all your products. Use the code VICEGRIP and you will get a discount plus free shipping right to your door. Well, Jessica's wiping down the old interior. I got a chore list a mile long. I'm going to put the carpet outside, let the sun get on it so she kind of lays out nice. A little bit easier to put in. And then these seat springs are just, they're bad. I mean, it doesn't look good. Thought about maybe sandblasting them, but then I'd have all that sand and the seat cushions and that'd be a mess. So I'm just going to throw it outside and take the old wire brush for about 17 months and just try to clean up some of the scale before I throw it back in the car. Just wouldn't feel right like this. I 
Guy did stay late last night and got all these done so we could handle them today. Yeah, and that was a lot more work than I reckon they'd be. There was a lot of body work that went into these. They were really heavily pitted and there were lots of dents. I actually missed one. You can kind of see it like that. For some reason, they were kind of just here and there. I used a nice one inch wide wire wheel from Lincoln Electric and did the bevels and kind of the curved parts, just kind of whoop, ran them through the old bench grinder and the rest of it was all hand sanded. This is a base clear and we tried to get as close as we could to the car color. We actually hooked the computer on it, but it's a little bit more vanilla-ish than a guy wanted, but it's actually gonna match the seats pretty good. And then I used a satin clear, so it's got a little sheen on it, but it's nothing crazy. That'll look pretty nice. I got the clips in it, seat belt holders, everything like that. So once we get done cleaning, I'll put some gloves on. We'll be able to pop this stuff in pretty quick. Whole seat is treated. It turned out really good. There are some weird rust stains coming through, bleeding through this. Must be from the frame or something. It took them right off. And I'm going to let it sit out here in the sun just for a little bit and dry up. I did find out it comes out kind of like shaving cream. And it doesn't take a lot. First I kind of did the and that was too much. Just a couple of drops here and there and then take your rag and work it in. A little bit goes a long way. The back side of the seat, we're just gonna clean in the car for now. Guy's got a package tray coming. I'll eventually pull the seat out and put that in. But for now, we're just gonna vacuum it up, clean it up. Jessica already started on this side. So that side compared to that side, I already see a big difference. And then, like I say, eventually we'll take it all the way out and clean the springs up like the other one and get the sides and then the cracks. But we're getting in there pretty good. My hardware for the back was all rusty and didn't look very good. But the stuff I got in stock here is really close, just not quite long enough. So I took all the old ones here and I just ran them through the wire wheel and hit them with some parts cleaner. And that looks pretty good. And that way I'll keep the factory hardware back here. I was kind of a dang old jigsaw puzzle getting this trim in here. Guy really wants to pay attention to how you pull it out so you can put her back. So I did the right thing and didn't do that. But I'm thinking this is the bottom. Something neat I want to show you really quick. I've built 84, 7 million A bodies and G bodies and whatever else. And then the trim here, you're just shooting your screw through and you're kind of trying to aim up there and find the hole for that screw to seat in. But the quality of Cadillac continues even where you don't see it. They run these plastic guides in here. And that way when you drop your screw in, you're bound to hit the hole. I've only got a couple screws left, but I'll tell you what, this is looking cleaner than a nun's diary. All the trim is up, and I got the A-pillar shot in as well. Time to move on to carpet. You probably noticed by now that the floor, she dried to a flat color. And guy did that on purpose. I didn't want that super shiny. I wanted it more to look like factory. Seam seal turned out great. That'll give us many, many more years of protection on that. Now I just need to come back through and there's about 87, 11 million screws holding all the wiring into place. I want to make sure to put all that back properly. And I ran those screws through the bench grinder as well. Then we can start kind of laying in the carpet. I want to get it kind of loosely trimmed up. We'll pull it back out, get the seat in, front carpet, rear carpet, back seat. Something like that. I'll change it five times. Lay it in the front carpet here. And what I'd like to do is find something in the center kind of as an anchor. So then you can start lining up your sills and things like that. And with this vehicle, there's two little ball studs down here that the gas pedal pushes into. And she rocks on it. And how I find the holes for my seat belts and the seats and all that stuff. I use a dental pick and you can poke it up from the bottom or the top. Bottom's easier for me because you could just fill the hole and just stick it up. Then I heat up a punch and then I just stick this down that same hole, work it around, and it makes a perfect circle without frayed edges and stuff. You could drop that bolt right in. Soldering iron will work too, but the nice thing about this is it ends up having about the same width as the bolt. So a guy could just poop, 
plop that right down in there. I'll get that put on and this carpet's a little bit different. The factory unit, she was cut back like this and that seat sat in and then you could roll the carpet around the seat. But this one lays over the bolt holes. So now I'm gonna have to figure out if I wanna do it the hard way, which I probably will. But we're gonna have to keep raising and lowering the seat so the carpet doesn't get all scrunched up. Make sure that can get in there nicely. It's gonna look good though. This is a nice piece of carpet. Better be for what I paid, Moses. So this one I was able to get from the bottom, but this one's boxed in because of the frame. So I'll just pull this out. And you can hear it landed right into the bolt slot. And as this cools, it'll make a nice little perfect circle. There you go. So that's where my bolts drop in for the seat. It's important a guy gets all the corners tucked in and weighted down. So I got my carpet holder down at 200s. Make sure they're GM, that's important. And these are lawnmower wheels. Just kind of slide them back in there. And once you get all this compressed, then you come out here and start trimming. I've got the shin guard 50s on, and then I can get in here and start cutting where the sill plate's gonna go. Then I gotta come back through and get through both these carpets for the rear seat bolt, which actually is like back here and Took us about nine hours to get it out because, well, look at my hand. And I had to call Jessica over. But all in all, this is taking way too long. But, boy, is it soft. So I'm farting around with the carpet. Jessica's trying to clean these up. Ooh, and that smells so good. What kind of flavor we got? It doesn't say, but smell it. Are you yeah, getting that? Oh, I already got it. It's I like good. It a lot. And this stuff is working really good. It's taking all that moss and mold and stuff off. Also, we found these in the seat. It's how you size your ring finger. And fun fact, I'm a 12. Getting all the seat belt bolts in. And starting to put the sills on. The other side's already done. This one's really rotten. And it's not doing anything for me. I found new old stock sills, but I'm not paying 500 bucks. I found a decently used ish set on Evil Bay. For I think, uh, what did I pay, 60 bucks? So I'm gonna take the four I have here, try to make one good kit, put those together. And the other one has the Fisher tags and it's definitely not rotted like that, so that helps. But I'm gonna put it in now anyway, because some of this is gonna hold the carpet in place while we kind of wrestle that seat in here. Once we get that seat set in, we'll probably call it a day and the rest of it I can kind of finish up by myself, but I, I really need Jessica's help to get that seat in. There you go. Okay, I'll gently set it on the door. I'll be climbing in. Okay, up a little bit towards me. Okay, down. Up, towards me. Down. Apparently we just needed Bradley the whole time, because that was way easier than getting it out. Good job, fam. Guy's making some pretty good progress. Seats are all bolted in. Got the belts in. That was pretty easy, not so bad. That one's kind of a bugger. I accidentally broke the seat switch getting the seat out. So I had a hot wire on that to get her to move around so I get the bolts in. In the future, I'll take some of that quad steel wool and I'll get all the surface rust, even that service tag off. And then you can even run them over these belt buckles. Now to get like that surface rust off, clean them up really nice. I think I'm going to move on and clean all the plastics up with the interior detailer. Then I'll treat on the seats. Then I'll run in the town while that's drying. I'm going to spray off these mats. The back clearly held some water big time. I'm hoping these come clean. I was scooting around on the interwaves. I ordered some parts. I got new script coming there i got the correct door lock knobs coming as i mentioned earlier i've got sills i think i got a lens and a couple other things but a guy's peepers hooked on a set of new old stock mats and they wanted 590 dollars for this right here goodness gracious so i'm just going to spray these off and hope that some of that comes out i think it will trunk I'm gonna leave it for now, but I'll eventually come back and 
patch this up over here. The reason it looks so black and kind of wet right now is I just threw down some rust treatment on it, try to slow her down a little bit. And one quick vacuum at the end, and I think we're gonna be we're gonna be there, but man, is it looking sharp? That new white trim in there really cleans it up. I got some mold in the headliner up here in these seams. I gotta find a good way to get that out of there. Right now I'm kind of just smearing it around. Uh, if you got any ideas for that, let me know. Get that out of the seams there. And it's tough because it's a white top. So, man, I don't know. Also these door panels, you got any ideas to get these stains out that doesn't involve nuclear reactors or mixing magnesium and nitrate and things like that? Let me know. I should probably mention, you don't actually need to wipe this off. You could just spray it on and walk away, but I really want to work it into this since this is kind of the first treatment it's had in 20 years, something like that. This is cleaning up great. A couple more minutes on this thing and move on to seats. Before a guy goes to town with this leather cleaner and conditioner, make sure you test on it in a small area. And a little bit goes a long way. Just put it on a soft rag. I'm going to use a t-shirt here. And basically you work it into the seat. And once she dries, you can actually come back and even buff on it a little bit. Moving on to the windscreen here. Guy was able to get these old stickers out with some goo gone and a razor blade. And I'm just using the traditional glass cleaner here. I tell you what fellers she looks real good got the mats in those came out pretty clean I think I keep scrubbing on them we'll get the rest of the rust stains out of them but sprayway products did a great job on the dash and all the plastics the seats look fantastic they got a little sheen on them already and that's just the first application so the more we clean on this thing the better it's just gonna keep getting Guy's got about 74, 11 million ideas what to do next, but I'm interested to know what you guys are thinking. Put it down there in the comments and Guy might even snip one up and do that. For now, I'm gonna push her outside. I gotta get that Chevelle back in here because Cletus and Cars is coming up real quick and I just ain't got the time. Thank you guys for watching so much. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell thing. That does something, and if you're interested in a capillator or a back rag or some of that other stuff, go to vicegripgarage.com. Thanks, guys.